Now let's talk about output. What do you do with all that stuff? Well, one of the things that you can do and what I think is really helpful is to create a persona. And personas are, again, another widely known tool in the marketing toolbox. Um, but there, you can do a bunch of different ways. They are more or less useful depending on what you do with them. I have a couple of examples um, that I can show you. This is one uh, that we use periodically and we just have it filled out for a woman named Anxious Anna. I don't know who decided that people should have alliterative names on these personas, but I think it just, everybody, pretty much everybody does this and I think it just makes them easy to remember because you're adding a, a uh, an adjective, a definer to a person's name, and you're kind of connecting them with what their uh, persona is. So you've got, you've done all this audience research. You figured out that there are, I don't know, X different types of people in your group. You can group them into sort of different needs, different pain points, different kind of person, different kind of personalities. This one's for anxious Anna. We have uh, just again, it's kind of just putting down what you learned in that content discovery and what you've learned in your interviews if you've done them on one piece of paper so you can have an easy guide to look back to. So Anxious Anna, we picked a picture for her. She's 34. She's a sole earner. She's struggling to keep food on the table uh, with insufficient income. That's her top line pain point. So that's the thing that we're going to want to keep remembering as we're creating content for her. Uh, she has sole custody of her child. She has part-time job. She has some goals that we've defined here that she wants to pay off her credit card debt. She wants to pay her bills on time. And then she has these behaviors. Um, she Things that we've learned in our interviews or learned in our research that people like her tend to do that we're going to want to remember. So she Googles how to search for new side jobs. She manages uh, and sets strategy with her finances, but she doesn't do it very well. Um, she has these pain points. She doesn't know a lot about finances. She must defer at least one bill a month. All these things are going on in her lives that are things that ostensibly this client can solve for her and things that we're going to want to push on in our information or in the product we're developing. Um, she has needs. She has a hard time calculating what side work is a good investment. She needs immediately actionable information and have a lot of time. So we're just painting a picture of this person, a pretty well-rounded picture that we're going to look back to as we're making decisions on what to say on a website, how to say it, uh, and where to place information. And then here's some, you know, some emotions. She feels anxious and uninformed and unstable. These are, <laughs> these are very disturbing smileys. <laughs> Um, and she wants to feel confident and hopeful and comfortable. And then I love having a little quote on here as well. Uh, just something from one of those anxious Anna participants that is just encapsulates sort of how, how they feel and what their motivations are. So right, hers is I want to save money and not live paycheck to paycheck. It's a struggle to make ends meet. So that is a persona. There are a thousand ways to do that but making it relevant and giving making it detailed enough is kind of the point like a lot of times i'll see personas that are basically just kind of up here in this area that are like that'll give just basic demographic information this doesn't give you a lot of info at all um, if it's a brand persona a lot of times i'll put in there like what brands they like what brands they don't connect with so you have a sense of kind of what their tastes are it just depends on what you're using it for as to what kind of information you want to put on there all right uh, step three is about another thing that we can do with all of that information that we've gathered. And that's you want to create uh, either user stories or jobs to be done or called job stories. They're similar, but they're appropriate in various different situations. So a user story is a user story has a, a structure like this as a person of a particular role. I want to perform an action or find something out so that I can achieve my goal of whatever. Okay, so that's a user story. So, um, and they're great if you have a bunch of audiences that are gonna be using a website because you can do one user story for each audience. An example might be like, as a runner shopping for shoes, I wanna find out if New Balance has the latest technology so that I can have the highest performance pair of shoes possible. So that's a user story. Um, if you only have just one primary as I said, one ring to rule them all kind of audience. Job stories might be better because they're just more specific. They're less about filing people into groups with various different paths than they are about um, narrowing down to a specific task. So a job story goes like this. When there's a particular situation, I want to perform an action or find something out so I can achieve my goal of X. So like, let's say that you uh, run a mortgage lender website. When I'm trying to pay my mortgage, I want to do it quickly so I can get back to work. So 
personas, users, and job stories are great uh, to go along with those personas, to go to use all of the great information you've gathered. So what do you do with it now that you have all this stuff? Well, you use it as your point of truth when you're planning content, when you're planning the experience, even when you're thinking about design. And if you're a developer, when you're thinking about the interactions that you're creating. So you're going to ask some questions of yourself over and over again. What is my user's goal? What must we help them do? Does this decision serve their goals or a job they must do on this website? Would they understand or find this information where I'm putting it? Would they understand this information? Or would they even be able to find it here? Um, are we at the part of the process or narrative that they are, or do we need to back up and give them more information for them to sort of catch up? Like, are we telling the story in the right order? Will they connect with or even understand what or how we're phrasing here or what we're presenting? Um, and all of this happens best when a content designer and a UX person and a designer and to some degree a developer are collaborating and sharing. It's not as effective if you're honestly writing the story in separate rooms, right? That's not, that's not creating a narrative, that's a game of telephone, right? So you, if you're all working together and you're using the audience research as a benchmark, you're gonna be creating something that is audience-led and audience-appropriate from all angles, not just the one that you're working on. 